Mr. do not self-medicate. Seek early treatment for all your health issues. Watch Vodafone Healthline to learn about issues pertaining to your health and wellness. Ready? Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Chamber Dialogue. My name is Derek and I'll be your host for the session. Today we'll be talking to the Chief Executive Officer of Vodafone Ghana and she's a lady. We'll be talking to her about her personality, we'll be talking to her about corporate life, more importantly understand her general thoughts on the industry as well as questions that we have sampled from you, the consumer. Come along and let's have this conversation. Good afternoon, Patricia. Good afternoon, Derek. And thanks for uh, letting us into your office. We're invading your office today for the Chamber Dialogue. My pleasure. You're welcome. My, my, my uh, viewers are, are very happy to see you. <laughs> and we love to see you already. You look good in red. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love my brand. <laughs> I know. So today I wanted to have a conversation with you a bit about uh, personal life, a bit about um, your own understanding of the industry, a bit more about your corporate journey, and then also just touch a bit on some of the consumer uh, issues around your your brand, mm -hmm. and then also the industry, because people have a lot of questions to sure, ask you. Sure, sure, sure. So the Chamber Dialogue, uh, as you know, is one of uh, the Chamber's flagship uh, initiatives where we have conversations with key stakeholders about issues related to the industry. Good. So uh, my first question to you will be, um, how is it like being CEO of such a big brand with about a quarter of Ghana being your subscribers and how are you coping with the whole cloud as CEO? <laughs> it's been an interesting journey. It's actually two years already. Yes, um, two years, three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been very engaging. Um, you never get bored. The industry is very competitive. Mm -hmm. Telecom is fast paced, technology keeps changing. And so, and the consumer needs are also always changing. Mm. They always have expectations of the brand. And so you always have something to keep you going. You never get bored. Yeah. And interestingly, I have quite a number of stakeholders to deal with. Oh. And so they keep me going. And, and I think it's, it's one of the fantastic roles you could ever get. Lovely. So, so having sailed through the ranks, I think me, you've been my friend for a couple of years. You see, about <laughs> close to 10 years. Uh, I know you've done fixed business, you've done consumer business, you've done technology director. You have about 126 months experience in the Vodafone brand alone. Uh, having sailed through all these ranks, would you say that you would have wanted to be technology director or you would have wanted to be at your role at fixed business or you still would want to be at the CEO role? At least having this position for two, two years plus. You know, my one of my early the bosses I had earlier on told me I was actually born into the net occupation center. <laughs> so <laughs> the the experience through the the journey has been significantly helpful mm -hmm. in in taking up the role, and I think being able to put together everything. So having experienced two telecom companies yes. in this country, and um, technology director roles, and then as you mentioned, consumer roles, man managing P and O, managing customer operations, applying everything you have learned and now being able to see the end-to-end -end picture as CEO um, combining that with the external stakeholders I manage I think I'm in a much better place um, putting everything I have done over 
22 years or so Whoa. together um, to be able to and this platform also helps me to make impact there's something I love about touching people um, and so this gives you a much bigger platform to be able to do it um, you it's a position of influence and so you're able to do some of the things that you naturally would not be have been yeah. able to do um, without the role so happy to be in the role now I'm not has the role and its uh, associated pressures uh, let me see has it affected uh, your family life your faith i know you like going to church so family life faith relationships with your friends mm -hmm. and then also uh, your personal life what, what would you say it has, has done How, what has it changed let's see family you? so um you asked before <laughs> let me take it so family my kids are blessed to have been born at a time when their mother was already busy <laughs> so okay. they have grown to accept this as yeah. the way of life and i'm sure they think that's how all mothers are <laughs> like because um, i had them just before i took up one of them just before i became technology director and to go and then the other one technology director um when i was technology act actually and then the last one was in vodafone as a technology director so they've always seen a busy mother um, okay. and they've kind of accepted i have a way of adjusting with them so the ceo role hasn't brought more complications that i've had if you've managed okay. a network as as big as vodafone <laughs> yeah. or, or what my other role had yeah. um so in terms of family i think they are used to used me to, yeah. sometimes being available sometimes not being available having to travel not have i think the COVID period has been a blessing because i haven't traveled the full year okay. so <laughs> they've been super yeah. happy with faith i mean i still teach english Sunday school okay. i am still on my church board i am Ooh. still um <laughs> the vice president of the women's fellowship i still oh. do the things that i have to do i still go to church i join online services so and i actually graduated from my pastoral ministries yes, as ceo yeah, so I saw that. I saw that. faith I saw that. actually it's it's been um it's actually challenged me to get deeper in faith okay. because you need it you i, need I it. believe you need it you need divine help <laughs> to get this job done <laughs> um in terms of relationships i think there's one thing i ha i learned the hard way because i just got into the role and thought yeah life continues but people treat you differently and um, there's a different level of respect people give mm -hmm. you and sometimes they back off yes. they just feel they expect you to have an attitude because you are ceo and yeah. i'm seriously i don't have any <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like i'm the same patricia i just have yeah. more responsibilities to get on with so um, I think I've made more friends. Okay. I've built a wider network. Um, I've actually learned to play golf because of this role. And I, I keep saying I've made more friends on the golf course than I could have made anywhere. Yeah. Wow. So in terms of relationships, I have built a lot more. But you made a very fantastic point about people draw up. Like, I'm one of those people. I, I actually feel terrible now because I know I used to talk to you a lot yeah. during 2013, 2014. But when you got in the role, I personally thought, you're too busy, I have to give you your space. No, I shouldn't. And I know it will be like that for a lot of people. Yeah, people make excuses for you actually. And if you don't take care, you you get yourself into, yeah, they think I'm busy. And by the time you're done with the role, you have no relationships have no left. Relationships. So you need to protect the relationships that yeah, you had right. and even build more, I keep saying. Yeah. So what would you say is unique about uh, a female CEO and the whole glassing uh, metaphor from your perspective? <laughs> I think um, I would think it's a bit unfortunate that I still look like she is the CEO you know people were <laughs> put upon as a female CEO we're 50% of the population of this country it shouldn't be an amazing feat just because a woman became a CEO, CEO. you know but it's a journey and I think um, the country has progressed mm -hmm. people are uh, accepting that women can be equally competent mm -hmm. and do as as good as what the men are doing and even better um, I think that as women apart from the competence so let's level competence as fundamental okay. to become a CEO okay. we shouldn't make compromises and say just because she's a she's woman will give her the role, role right yeah. but once you you underline the fact that she's competent I think there's more that women bring women are intuitive women have guts uh, women can multitask I will say it over and over again women have empathy and you cannot take that away from the experience that these women have from growing up all the way till they become what they become mm -hmm. society has taken time to accept that women can grow into roles so the journey is usually more painful for the woman mm -hmm. so by the time she gets to the position of authority I think she has built enough depth she's competent mm -hmm. and has the ability to hold that role 
in the, with a lot of integrity and I don't see any reason why and I think actually people who don't have women in their boardrooms are missing out on the opportunity it's their loss and that's how <laughs> I will position are you a member of the executive woman? I am okay I think you just made a very big case for the woman in the sea in the sea within the sea uh sea role uh uh, I, I, look, I just like the way you basically broke down the, the whole reason. And look, I understand that women have a lot more empathy than, mm -hmm. than men, and they bring a lot more uh, a lot more to bear in the business in terms of how to gel the people together. You should come companies. to my boardroom. We have, out of the eight um, ex-co members, including myself, yes. we have five women. Five women. You should come to the boardroom and experience the dynamics around the table. I, I Decision making <laughs> is awesome. It's because awesome. you have perspective. Yeah. You really have perspective. Look, I'm enjoying the conversation with Patricia. Uh, stick and stay with us. We'll be back in a bit. There are so many things we have today that we could only have imagined 25 years ago. And the best part? We are just getting started. Now close your eyes. Imagine what the future holds. Imagine entertainment 25 years from now. Imagine education, healthcare, agriculture, transport. Imagine how we'll run businesses. Imagine connections 25 years from now. Whatever it is you imagine the future holds, We'll be right there with you, growing together and keeping you connected to the things that matter most. Because that's what we've been doing for 25 years, and that's what we intend to keep doing forever. Here's to the next chapter in our story. We can't wait to see what the next 25 years holds. Let's go everywhere you go. Welcome back. I've been having conversations with Patricia, CEO of Vodafone, and uh, thanks for that very exciting part of your personal journey. I, I just want to talk a bit about industry. Mm. Uh, so you've been in this role, like I said, you've been in this role for about two years plus, but you've been in Vodafone for 10 years plus. Mm. My question would be, what do you think about the telecoms industry over the last decade? Is this what you envisaged it to be and has it achieved this promise? as an industry, like 360 across everything relating to its performance, according to its like performance to its people, customers and all that? I think we've done well. Mm. I think the industry has come a long way. Um, Ghana, if you put Ghana in perspective compared to many African countries, we have the second highest in terms of mobile unique penetration. Yes. yes. We are second to South Africa. Yes. So although um, we, we have a long way to go, we still have opportunity, I think, Fundamentally, Ghana has done well. Ghana has come a long way. 2G, 3G, 4G. Yes, not every telco has 4G, but majority of the industry has, has 4G. And so um, you can see that translating into the, the usage of data um, in, the, in the market. We have mobile money, which is a service that is built on top of the mobile um, infrastructure that we have. We are building our fixed infrastructure as yes. well. Um, we have now seen many businesses going online. We have a lot of IT infrastructure being built. Look at the number of cables that land in Ghana. Yes. Somebody actually said, I think Ghana is oversold. Why is everybody <laughs> landing a cable? <laughs> and a cable actually, in. there's another cable about to come in, mm. you know. So the, 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 the country itself is well positioned. Mm. And I think the opportunity to grow digital um, is, is, is phenomenal. However, I believe there's, there's still um, opportunity for growth. I'm not sure we have gotten to where we should be. We have done well, but there's huge opportunity for growth. I say this because we pride ourselves in saying mobile penetration is 132% and higher. But think about what I said earlier on, which is the unique number unique of people number. who have it's 55%, mm -hmm. sub 60. Yeah, sub so 60. there are a number of people in this country who don't have coverage, yes. who don't have access to mobile phones. Now, that's not good. If you want to drive digital, we want to expand the economy, blah, blah, blah. We need to have these basic um, things with them. So I think there's huge opportunity mm -hmm. um, to improve the infrastructure. There's opportunity to get devices into mm -hmm. the hands of the citizenry. And I think that's where Ghana needs to get to. I like the fact that you're already touching on my second question, which was going to be, which was going to be, what are some of the challenges and opportunities? But maybe away from the opportunities, what would you say are some of the challenges that the industry is faced with today? Mm -hmm. Right. So 
I think for me, uh, mobile penetration should have been higher than it is today. So okay. in terms of coverage, coverage, we should have covered more towns, more villages than we have done today. Um, so that, that for me is one thing that we need to address. The second one is access to spectrum, right? Okay. It's, it's, um, it's a critical infrastructure. My CTO tells me, Patricia, I need spectrum. We eat spectrum. <laughs> Telcos <laughs> eat spectrum. And so we crave for it. It helps us to reduce our cost. It helps us to deliver better experience. And I'm looking forward to an opportunity where spectrum will become available. We have it, but the way we have licensed it mm -hmm. makes it a bit more difficult to, to have the flexibility around. I think the Minister of Comms has been talking about driving tech neutrality into the industry one other area that really kills the industry is 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 a uh, is our costs right our cost to operate our cost to carry there's so much that we pay in import duty to bring equipment in country yes. we don't manufacture anything yes. here everything. so everything is imported yeah. right um and so any any I'm, I'm not even talking about currency or anything like that yeah. because it affects all industries yeah. but for us that that's that's huge um taxation on on our equipment is something that affects the affects overall cost overall to carry cost. and then you come to fiber cuts this is not something that affects many industries we all have energy costs and stuff but after i have spent so much money to bury the cable somebody's either building he's stealing the cable all sorts of damage that's done vandalism on our infrastructure yeah. so you end up having a minimum cost to operate and then there are other things that build on top of yeah. it and then that destroys your model i know everybody says we need to drop the cost of data, but yes. we need to understand that it's such a capital intensive yes. industry. Yeah. And then after that, you look at your cost of operation as well. And when other external factors build on top of it, that makes your life even more miserable. 20% of everything, every CD I collect from my customer goes back into taxes. This has nothing to you do with it. You want to take that again? You said over 20% 20, 20 yeah. of all the money I collect, for every CD so I collect. So if you spend a CD, about 20% 20, 20 plus of it yes, goes back so go, into, goes into taxes. taxes. Yeah. That has nothing to do with the import taxes I talked about. Yes. This is all your other taxes that yeah. I have to pay. Now, after that, then I have to look at employing people. I have to look at running that network. Yeah. Whether a customer makes a call or not, the network runs, runs. right? So there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's, there's so much that goes into running this industry that any help that we can get to drop our cost to carry yeah. is going to be passed on to consumers as benefits, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we say that the telecoms industry is a key driver of uh, the digital economy and mm. digital transformation in the region. I know you wrote an editorial recently on uh, driving digitization across Ghana and the continent. You want to share a few nuggets on that as well? For me, you know, I keep saying we can talk, we can see everything we yeah. want. If we don't address the fundamental issue of connectivity, yes. if the person does not have the signal, you can forget digital. He needs to have access to mobile coverage or fixed network. We did an assessment and looked at the number of households in Ghana. Yeah. We looked at those who can afford, okay, households, and then we narrowed down to, let's say, urban, yeah. income earning, people who can afford to pay for minimum broadband. Opportunity in Ghana is like 800,000. And yet, even with that, yes. we have not been able to connect 25% of that with cable. You go to Europe and it is taken for granted. Every home has a cable, every home has fiber or copper, right? We have started a transformation. Today, 70% of the customers are now on fiber. It's only 30% left on copper. It used to be the reverse. Mm. So we have started the journey where we are replacing the existing copper and also putting in fiber. But there's only so much that I can do. I know the other um, players are also doing the same. Yeah. But this requires partnership with governments. This is not something we want to drive digital economy access. This is not something that the telcos can do alone. Yeah, no. And so I was very happy when the Minister of Comms announced the rural plan, the rural connectivity project. And and as of yesterday, I think we had 50 sites already gone live. Yes. yes. And, and if we can get 1,000 unconnected communities to yeah. come, to, to be lighted up. This is fantastic for us. So this is why I call partnership with government yes. to make it happen. Make it happen. You know, we need to get connected. And then the second one is the handsets. We talk about, like we said, <laughs> it's only, uh, what, 16 million of the population yes. that have access to smartphones. You want them to do data, break the 16 million, then it's only 10 million who are actually doing data. data. No, 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 no. We can, we can, 
put up everything else on top of it, if we don't fix the fundamental infrastructure and devices conversation, yeah. this, this dream isn't going to happen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. When, when COVID happened, like, let me come to businesses, when, when COVID struck, it was shocking to yeah. find businesses that you would have assumed would have online presence didn't have it or the presence was horrible yeah they couldn't you couldn't buy you couldn't get end-to-end -end transaction yeah. done online right and it was reality for us but we stepped up and we yeah. said let's help so. let's let's drive business online let's get companies set up there's a lot that has to go into how we enable mm. right let me come to payments there's so much there do you have time for this <laughs> <laughs> let me come to payments that's my so, area let's go if you don't if you don't enable payments, digital yes. payments, yes. deliberately, right? Yes. One, you have the access. One, two, you put a device in the person's hand. But if you don't put in policies that deliberately and get people to use the stimulate technology, usage. yes, stimulate yes. usage, then yes. you're still going to have a very, because you have a very large informal sector, mm -hmm. you're going to get to the point where you have the access, you have the technology, and people are uh, still transacting it. cash. You don't yes. have access to any information, any data. Mm -hmm. You can't improve on anything. This, you must go by policy and yeah. say, for example, a minimum level of transaction or should be free. Should should be should should be digital. Should be digital. Okay, yes. Sure. Yeah. Or you say after a certain amount, you can't transact this X amount in cash. Or business with MMDAs at a certain level should yes, all be should paid all through, be digital, through digital. You you, yeah. you need to enforce it by policy, and that's how you will drive the change. It's like changing from plastics to paper, yeah. right? This is not something you do by will. You talk about you appeal to people. You legislate. You know. So if we want to go digital, I think. There's been a lot that's been done fundamentally, address systems, yes. getting interoperability done, yes. and yes. we're going to do SIM re registration, registration again. Fantastic. A couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And I think these will be enablers, yes. right? That we will have to, but we have to drive digital payments to become a part of the way the Ghanaian society. L let me poke you a bit. So I like the fact that you talk about we, we are here to do our own business, we're here to do our own jobs. But in some way, our jobs fuse into what government's policy itself is because this government has been very heavy on driving a digital economy on the back of growth and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so beyond what you do on a daily basis or what your shareholders expect of you, you also have to veer into enabling government's own policies Absolutely. to become successful. But look, along the day or along the way, we also get... Uh, different types of uh, challenges. Mm. One of them has been that uh, the mobile industry has always been under the allegation that we under declare revenue <laughs> and that we don't pay what we are supposed to pay. I worked in the telco industry for 12 years, uh, being with an operator before coming to join the chamber. Uh, and it's a very interesting allegation every time I hear it because I know the way uh, revenue is treated um, from a business perspective and all that. But what is your response as one of the industry players? And I know Ghanaians are watching you. They are thinking that, so can this nice lady under declare government revenue? Patricia, what would you say about that allegation? <laughs> you know, my finance director will tell you we are one of the most audited companies. Yes. <laughs> Locally and globally. <laughs> and uh, look at all the brands represented in Ghana, right? Yeah. You are either listed in Ghana or your mother company is a listed company. Yes. You have zero room to do this because the impact will be it will be great. It's much bigger. The loss to the bigger brand is much bigger than how much tax I'm going to evade in this country, of right? Of course. There's, there's so much damage out there waiting for us that you don't have any luxury. Statutory payments, statutory obligations are the first that go out of my books yes. every single every month. Single. And so I think through the chamber, we're waiting for the report, the audited report, yes. so that we can see this exposure and try and understand what this What's means. But mm. as I'm sitting here, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea what that means. Okay. But I can confidently say from everything that we have done yeah. and checked and seen, we do not do that. We do not under the no, government. No, revenue. we do not do that. <clears throat> well, good. I'll run away from under declaration of revenues, and I'll talk about maybe the consumer a bit. Uh, so cons customers have over the period raised concerns about uh, some of our services. Mm. People are always on your Twitter handles or your Facebook, and they're saying, I've requested for a Vodafone fix, but it hasn't come. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on two of these issues. Well, one, I'll talk about network challenges. Uh, how is Vodafone addressing this as the first one? Okay. So... Fundamentally, we are here to work. We are yes. here, to, and I only make money when a customer is connected. Of course. So we need to start from the point where 
there's no reason why I would keep a customer unconnected. It hurts. No, it's not. It hurts. It hurts us every single second, every single minute when we do not have connectivity. You know. So there are some of the issues that are external. Yes. Probably 30% of the issues that I have are all caused by things that I don't control. Of course. Somebody is constructing, he cuts my cable. Even where I have paid for right of way yes. and my cable is in the right, somebody decides, yeah, we have decided issue. to put, <laughs> re relocate this road and build it in this direction. Yeah. And so the telco cable is affected. You can have discussions with highways, urban roads. The right guy who way. sits in the truck was not at that meeting he doesn't see he was That's not there <laughs> yeah and then he just scoops that cable yeah. out and it takes you time um to to, to be able get, to get slice it, and get it, it done mm. people see fiber cable and they think it is copper mm. they cut it take it home and realize it is nothing of use to them right copper gets stolen and thanks to the judicial service now we have a saturday court mm. where people who steal telecom cable i mean they are caught they are prosecuted yes. especially and they're able to to get um, um, conviction quickly but you can't even export telecom um, copper again if it gets to the post we are called to inspect so at yes. least there's help um yes. to help us um, yes. prevent it but it's it's really really uh, painful to find we if you're going to the north i have like three parts to the north you know, just to make sure I can prevent the, the entire north going mm -hmm. down. You can have two cuts in a day. Yeah, I know. You, you can have, which means a part of the north. It's, it's completely yeah. taking off. Last year, I think we had a cut that basically separated the south, south from the, the north. north. Yes, and, yeah. and now that the telcos are sharing infrastructure, yes. it affects me no, and it affects the, yeah, it affects the other person as well. So how much room do we have? I know it's um, all telco cables are now going to be treated as critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure, yes. Yeah, and, and it is in the right direction because hospitals get affected, schools shut down, yes. businesses shut down when yes. we have cable cuts. And it's just not acceptable. Um, in terms of uh, connectivity and broadband, <clears throat> listen, I understand that there's so much demand and we're not able to do this ourselves. And that's why we've moved into partnerships. One of the things I did when I came into the role with my ex school was that if we want to accelerate the growth and accelerate the, the, the ambition that we have, then we have to go into partnerships. You can't pretend to do everything yourself. Exactly. And you can check, we've signed many partners who have come into great different commercial models with us and they are rolling and connecting communities. So if we haven't come to your community, we will get there. Yes. But there's an aggressive plan to, to get it done. I think the Minister of Finance announced last year that they were going to allow the telcos to partner with the electricity company um, during the mid-year budget review yeah. to allow us to have access to the polls and deploy yes. faster. I think this is this is also going to help. So there's absolute commitment to get network service to be where it is. It just, some of the things are just um, I agree with you. It's, it's been captured in most of the things that you've said about the commitment that you have to be able to extend connectivity mm -hmm. as much as possible if you want to grow and digitize mm -hmm. the uh, economy or digitize yeah. country. One other thing was, the second thing for me was unsolicited text message. Mm. Uh, customers are always complaining that they're getting text messages. Some of these text messages comes with the charge on their, on their small, uh, small air times. Time, yeah. And so there's always complaints on Facebook that they intentionally do this. No. What's the current state of play? I, I, maybe you can speak from the Vodafone perspective. Does Vodafone um, charge its customers for unsolicited text message and do they get unsolicited text message and what can they do as so, consumers? So nobody is charged for a marketing messaging. Yes. So buy Vodafone broadband and get two CDs, credits and that. Nobody gets charged for it. What people get charged are services that they have subscribed to. You know, there are many ways of getting subscriptions done and sometimes people go and, and accept terms and conditions somewhere without reading it and then they, they kind of subscribe to some of these services and then they say the telco has put, there's no incentive for me to, to do that. And what we have done to be able to prove to our customers that we don't deliberately come into your account and take money which you have been asked to take is two things. One. My call center agent, I don't wait for a back office, is empowered mm. to deactivate the service as soon as you complain. If a customer calls us and says, I did not subscribe to the service, my child did it, I left my phone, anything, right, whatever happened, 
the agent, first line agent can do, can do it. The customer is also empowered. Star 463 hash. Star 463 four, six, hash. hash. On the Vodafone number, you can dial it. You find any service that you have subscribed on, on this value added services, mm. right? And you can see A, B, C. You click on the service and you choose unsubscribe. Don't call us, don't do anything. So if there's anything you find somebody is charging you that you willingly or unwillingly put there, however it's been described, most of the time when you have checked, you will find the day the service was activated. Yes. But yes, people will say, I didn't do it. So we don't dispute it. Okay. If you didn't do it, it means you don't want the service. Agents will do it for you. Or you, or you do have it the yourself. power to do it yourself. Yes. I, I want, star I want four, to get six, money. Yes, yeah, star for six. I want to earn money that my customer is willing to Legitimate give to me. Legitimate money. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. We are a very ethical company. I don't do that. That's that's good to know. So, I look, uh, we'll be coming back. Uh, we'll be coming back with Patricia. We're talking a bit about uh, the Vodafone brand. That'll be the last part of this interview. Sir. Are you feeling pressed for time? Why rush to finish what's yours? Your time is up, but you may pay again to get another plate. Ah, could you? We haven't even had dessert yet. Oh, sorry, I have your shower. It's time to switch to new Airtel Tigo Fuse. Call all networks, no expiry. Too much. You didn't enjoy. The fuse bundle now. Or Tema Tula. But then you will have a mamba. Enjoy. Dial star 567 hash to bundle now. Airtel Tigo. Life is simple. Welcome back from uh, the break. I'll be talking to you, Patricia, uh, about the Vodafone brand before we wrap this up. And uh, look, customers don't say only bad things about, about Vodafone. Uh, they say quite some very positive things. I just wanted you to share a bit of the status of the plans you have on some of these initiatives. The first one for me will be uh, the free mobile money transfers. <laughs> that's, like, that's like a market break. Like everybody, I, I have so many friends who suddenly just shifted their networks to Vodafone. Just be, what's the what's the whole intention behind that? And will it stop tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had done a number of things for consumers um, during the pandemic when yes. it was quite high, and we thought actually this is not enough. The one of the concerns that people have in the reason why they leave their homes to send to 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 transfer money is is the charges so the, he, he prefers to pick a taxi and walk to somebody's house and give him the money mm. or delay the payment so he can see the yes. person and we thought why don't you fix the fundamental problem right in the end you you need to allow more people access mm. before you start talking about growth you need mm. to get more people onto the network mm. so why don't you do what the consumers um, are worried about take the charges off mm. and let the base grow we are talking about less than 50 percent of the population still participating in mobile financial mobile services yes. so if we say we are a brand that is serious about driving peppers then our peppers must lead us you mm. don't always talk about profit mm. so drop the charge across net we started with vodafone to vodafone yes. but that base wasn't that huge right so we said if you want to make impacts then let him be feel free to send the money across networks now that was a killer yeah um, yes and we took the bold call and it's not gone away yet it's august will be a year and i intend wow. to continue for some time you intend to continue first time, time on your channel yes, yes. announced <laughs> I, ha I have a feed i have a feed no, but it's so, no, but because Patricia, it's working for 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 Ghanaians. So it's, it's working more, for it's consumers. more purpose driven than even profit. It is more purpose driven than profit. I and tell so, you. And so, how do we? How do? So, because it means that you're making losses. Because it means that if I if you do business with maybe an MTN or an Airtel Tigo, you have to pay you have to pay those brands. Yeah. Wow. This yeah. is this is interesting. Yeah, you, you can't just talk. Yeah, you have to you have, you have to demonstrate, to demonstrate it. it. Yeah. And this is our one sure way of demonstrating to Ghanaians. When I say we live by peppers, this is it. That's the brand with the blood in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> what about the health line and some of the COVID nineteen uh, interventions? Yes. Yeah, so so we have two aspects of health line. Okay. One is where we cover um, 
difficult surgeries mm -hmm. and we cover this on TV, live TV for okay. people to, to get the emotion, to get the feel and to yeah. see how you can move somebody from a very painful situation into comfort. A, into comfort and to a life-changing situation just because you paid for the surgery, yeah. right? And then the other thing we did was actually during the COVID period, people just, the hospitals were crowded. People just couldn't get access to, to, to mm. basic help, yeah. right? They Support. just wanted somebody to ask the question. So we signed up 50 doctors. They could speak six languages. They were running shifts. Um, 24-7? Yes, and wow. <laughs> they were working eight to eight. And it was seven days a week. Now I think it's down to five days a week. And you can call them and ask them any question. And Vodafone was paying you Yes, we, and we, we are still doing and still paying. Yeah? Okay. So you ask them any questions, they will do their diagnostic for you. And then even for those who we were able to determine had possible COVID case, yes. cases, we referred to the rapid response team. Um, they were directed to their homes, all the protocols. Absolutely. And it's amazing how people have have been able to use that service. You call that channel is free. Mm. We have, we've, ha we've given this to other networks. Please don't charge your customers when they call use the it. call center. You can use it, but it's your decision, right? And this is, again, something that we're doing for the country. Um, it costs us money, but I think it's it's good to do these things for okay, the citizens. <laughs> and absolutely, who help you? So taking care of them on ground and yes. also through the digital support, um, yes. being able to work with doctors. These doctors have been phenomenal. Mm. You know how, how busy they are. I know. For them to show up at the call center and pick the calls Provide and support, support, I tell you, it's, it's amazing. Wow, it's that's good to know. Yeah. What about your business online? Ah, yeah. So that was the problem that we identified. <laughs> like, oh my God, we say we're driving SMEs, we are helping them, and yet you can't find them online. So what we did was to sign up a partner mm. and then be able to, as low as 90 days a year, be able to put a page online. And also those who had it and needed it to be tidied up, put yes. a whole support team in place to help them to drive. And then the uptake has been phenomenal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any, any sense of numbers? No, or? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, you know what <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll find out later on. But I know also Vodafone But it's still has, running. So it's still running. Yeah, so people yeah, can, people can What's the process to be able to go through? Oh, just go to our website. Okay. Yes, and then Vodafone okay. Business and somebody will engage you. Can get some you. support from yes, there. Yes, Super. Yes. Or any of our shops, any of our Facebook pages, our handles. You can so a lot more for the up. small business. Yes, and then, small okay. and medium scale businesses. Lovely. Just, um, please move online. Um, and On the back of a pandemic, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Look, Vod I know Vodafone is also very particular about its, um, its people. Yeah. Coming in here, I had to fill so many forms. I was like, oh gosh, I'm tired. It, the, I, I love the process. It's very meticulous and all that. Uh, and I know it's a plus working at Vodafone. I wanted to find out from you, uh, what is special about being a Vodafone staff today? Mm -hmm. And uh, how is Vodafone also helping address Ghana's high unemployment rates? So, you know, Vodafone is one of the top brands. So, naturally, people would like to be affiliated with it, but yep. it has to live the brand. The experience has to speak to what we say, the Vodafone experience, mm -hmm. right? So, when I joined the company, I traveled six countries, irrespective of what I knew, mm -hmm. just to upgrade whatever I thought I knew to Ooh. the Vodafone standard, okay. right? Not everybody will get the opportunity to travel, but what we have is the Vodafone University. And Derek, I tell you, even as CEO, I have mandatory courses that I have to take, to take <laughs> and educate myself okay. and upgrade myself every single year. Ooh. It's talent it's development. Sorry? It's part of your KPIs? Yes. Okay. Talent development is critical to Vodafone. Of we have course. 22 operations in the world, plus about 48 other partners. Mm. And moving talent around, growing competence is a core belief for mm. Vodafone. So we invest heavily mm. in, in training and development. We invest heavily in self-education. Mm. Um, and so even if you don't work here, you can find employment somewhere else. Mm. And, and it's, it's, it becomes like a talent pool. I know people take yes. people from yes. us, and I always tell them I'm happy to let you go because I can show you off as you pass through Vodafone. It's, there's, you, you, come, you work in Vodafone and you're not worried about discrimination. Mm. There's nothing about me being black. There's nothing about me being a woman. Mm. It's actually a point of pride. And it is the group CEO's KPI. Yeah. So I have a percentage of women on his, his ex school. His school. Yeah. Look, Everybody I tracks the diversity and inclusion yeah. you you can't be seen to even discriminate against them so it's a it's a place where it's 
is you're free to work. Mm. We have been working from home since March. Ooh. Yeah, and this the the previous year has been one of our fantastic years in terms of performance. You wow. are equipped with the right tools yeah. to get your job done. done. There's trust in the way we work. It's a very strong pillar. And we have something we call this, the Vodafone spirit. Mm. We drive creativity, we drive um, thinking that everything is possible. Yes. There's no limitation in how you yes. work. So there's a strong culture that you build around people. Yeah. Everything you deliver is around people. Mm. If you don't grow your people, you would think you have the money. Mm. You would think that you have the strategy. It's the people who get the job done. And I that's why we invest it. so much in people. No, Patricia, I so believe much. you because I, I, I know personally somebody had to lose their job for saying something bad to another staff. <laughs> so I, the, I, I think the Vodafone uh, staff experience story has to be told in another way or form. Because look, it should, be, it should be, I think it should be a plus or it should be a hope for a lot You know, we have emotions. absolute rules around safety. Okay. Well-being and safety. And it's in your own car. Mm. You have to wear your seatbelt. <laughs> you can't drink and drive. The, the car you can't, you money. can't, you can't, you know. <laughs> and you're like, you're thinking, what's your problem? Right? Yeah. It's my life. No, they love your life more than you love yourself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you recently changed your uh, brand positioning from mm. the, the future is exciting, ready? Yeah. To together we can. Mm -hmm. what's, what, what's informing that change and what does it mean for your customers? It's a very dynamic brand. And so we, over the years, we have been changing our taglines. Yes. From, I think when we came into the, it used to be, it's, yeah, it's our time. And then we came power yes. to you. It's power to you. Power to you. Yeah. <laughs> power to you stayed for some time. But it's always relevant for the times in which we are. Yes. And um, when when we did the future is exciting, we were just moving into 4G, new technologies, yes. AI, robotics, and everybody was saying the people are scared of the technology. But we need to present a front to them that says it's a very exciting future. It's going to change the world. Yeah. So be ready for it, yeah. right? And when we went into the pandemic, you can see although the technology was present. You actually needed the human mm. to use that technology, mm. and people went into. I have everybody. People who were afraid of technology and digital were compelled to get into using <laughs> it for payments. Yes. I don't even know what my checkbook is today because now I'm on my bank app, and that's life. <laughs> I mean, like I don't remember the last time I went to the banking hall. Yeah. Life changed. Everybody adopted to technology. So for us. Taking that human spirit yes. and then combining with the power of technology. So putting the human first mm. before the technology and putting that two together is what we're saying. Together, we can. You need the human to make the technology viable in life. Mm. And that's what we came up with, with together. Together, we, we can. can. Mm. Yes. Sounds good. <laughs> so, Pat Patricia, before, as I bring this to a close, I wanted to find out. Look, Ghanaians know that they own a bit of Vodafone card. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to find out from you, what's the state of that shareholder relationship mm. for me as a Ghanaian? Mm -hmm. If I want to know, I know Ghana bought Vodafone, mm -hmm. Vodafone bought Ghana Telecom, those mm -hmm. are buying here and there. Mm -hmm. But maybe just in, in a few words, what, do you, what, what should they know about this relationship now? So government still owns 30% shares in Vodafone, in Vodafone Ghana, Ghana and that hasn't changed. Okay. Government is represented on my board, okay. so on the uh, mobile financial services company, government okay. is represented. And on the big Ghana Telecom board as well, government is represented, okay. and the board representatives are very active. I, can <laughs> I <imagine>. have <laughs> I have good engagement with the Minister of Finance. He okay. knows my performance. He knows everything that happens. Okay. And you know my Minister of Comms oh, already, yes. right? So yes, um, <laughs> my the the the, the government um, shareholders, the representatives are very very interested in the business, yeah, and they have been very very supportive. Mm. I mean, areas where, for example, um, during COVID. The network was just congested. Yes. Equipment was stuck in China. We so had no help, right? Yeah. We just had to speak to our shareholders. We had to speak to government, the minister, and then they give the industry access to spectrum, mm. right? The like, emergency spectrum. Yes, yes. They, they give the industry emergency spectrum. They took the limitation of U900 and said, yes. we used to use it in rural. You guys are having trouble. You can use it in urban. Yes. That's phenomenal support, yeah. right? And now they're doing the rural... Um, the rural rollout yes. um, and allowing telcos to to connect to it you know so the support has been good, been good. Support has been so good. just in bringing this to a closure from the post pandemic recovery mm -hmm. and uh, all what the brand and the business has been through uh, are you happy with what Vodafone has achieved over the period and, I am uh, proud oh you didn't let me finish so that's good so you, you're proud and, and what should the customers expect 
I am proud of what Vodafone has achieved. I mm -hmm. think when Vodafone came into the country, we were number four. Yes. And um, with um, a network that was 2G moving into 3G, and now we have 4G. 4G. And we are number two, a strong mm -hmm. number two. I am confident that with the innovation that we have been able to drive, you look at some of the things that we put out in the market, you will think we are crazy, but we're responding to customer needs and also preparing for the future. future. It's very, very important the way we structure our business that it is future ready. So you see a lot of self-service. We have robotics um, actively working. Yes. We have put Toby on a on our social media channels and people are, I know we're ahead of the call because you want, <laughs> I don't want to speak to a robot, please a robot. come along the journey yes. with us because this is what the world is the going into. And all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're developing the youth actively. Um, mm -hmm. You can find quite a number of millennials in our company today. We have a graduate program, a youth the HR has a youth employment target, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, um, to pass a number of youth through our company every, every year. year. Yes, yes, it's part of our contribution to um, social development. So people should expect a brand that is committed to the mm -hmm. social contract that we have with them. Mm -hmm. That will live beyond profit. That's mm -hmm. going to do things that are relevant for the future than mm -hmm. just today's profit. Mm -hmm. And as for innovation, you can be sure it will not stop. We will not stop. Patricia, I'm grateful for your time. My pleasure. Spending time with you, I'm taking what I'm taking away is that uh, this is not just a business. It's always it feels like an NGO <laughs> in a sense. It feels beyond just a, it's business. a business with the heart. It's a business with the heart. That's why it's red. <laughs> so just red blood running through the heart. Um, I'm I'm excited for for the things that you've shared with us. I'm Thank so you. grateful for your time, and I know your customers equally are, are excited about the time you spent with us. And, pleasure. Uh, I know we'll be back soon. <laughs> And uh, thanks for, thanks for even for, bigger stuff. I right? know, even bigger <laughs> stuff. Thanks for spending time with us. It We're grateful. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thanks for listening. And I, I've been with the CEO of Vodafone. I'm sure you love the things that she said. I've got a couple of scoops, and you'll be hearing from us shortly. Thank you. Bye. Facebook. No, please be serious. Mobile My money mobile account. money account. Someone just redeemed money. Are you sure? I just got a notification. Are you sure you don't ask anyone to do so? No, I didn't send anyone to do that. Hey. So, are you able to check? Well, okay. Talco has stolen my money. Let me call them. Oh, Talco cannot just steal your money just like that. Okay? I mean, are you sure you did not buy anything online and you use mobile money I to pay? I didn't buy anything. Okay, okay, fine. How about subscribing for a service that requires mobile money deduction? Which service in Ghana will cost you 2,000 cities? Eh? Huh? 2,000 Ghana cities? Which hotel could you stay? Uh, in fact, this one, let's leave the police case. It's hotel co first. Yes, fine. But before that, um, are you sure you're the only one who knows your account details? Of course. No, no, I'm talking about your mobile money pin. I am the only one who will. Relax, take your time. Hey, God, I've been careless. Uh, what is it? A week ago, there's this errand boy that comes around. So he was running an errand for a colleague, and I sent him with my phone and my pin to withdraw money from me. It was an emergency. Huh. So you trust a stranger that much to give him your pin? I needed help. You needed help? What kind of help? He didn't do it that day. Of that course. Way. Of course, if you had any doubt, it would have been so obvious. If you had a thief, would you have any that day? So what do I do now? Change your mobile money pin to prevent further deduction. So you have 2,000 cities in your account, and we don't even have common Ghana rice in this house. Ha! Hey! Be smart. Do not be a victim of mobile money fraud.